This is the iPhone XS Max, and it was the best phone Apple could offer you three years ago, and today, in 2021, its price on the used market has depreciated to that of a mid-range, while still feeling and behaving like a top-of-the-line device. And so, should this be your next smartphone? Let's find out. But before we get started, I would like to announce that I have made a text-free Discord server, so if you like to talk tech, why not join our community? I will also be providing channel updates and behind-the-scenes content. The link will be in the description, and I hope to see you there, otherwise I'll be quite sad. So, being a flagship device that's only around 3 years old, it's not really a huge shock that the iPhone XS Max still holds up great in 2021, and if you're currently using one, you don't need to upgrade for quite a while yet. If you're coming from an older iPhone, like a 6S or a 7, this would be a solid improvement to upgrade to. The build still feels extremely premium, the performance is still buttery smooth, and the cameras still do a really good job. There's also the fact that you can pick up one of these phones in the used market for the price of a mid-range. But is it the right device for you? Let's find out starting with the design. The design here is absolutely gorgeous, especially in this gold colour, which I have here, although the XS Max also comes in silver and space grey. This feels like a super premium and solid device, which I guess it is, mainly thanks to the stainless steel rails, but the design was actually the main selling point of the iPhone XS Max because of its sheer size. If you don't like big phones, you should click off this video right now, because the display measures in at 6.5 inches, whereas in comparison, the smaller XS comes in at 5.8 inches. While it kind of feels like you're holding a smaller version of the iPad mini, its thinness of 7.7mm actually makes it very comfortable in the hand and makes it really easy to fit in your pocket, unlike thicker phones such as the iPhone 11 or the XR. One-handed use for this phone is basically off the menu here, but if you're typing with two hands, it's actually really easy, since the keyboard isn't as cramped as on a smaller display. Which brings me to my next point, the Super Retina XDR OLED display. Apple nailed the display on the iPhone XS Max, from the sharpness, to the colours, to the small bezels, and the size makes everything you're viewing extremely immersive. Watching YouTube videos or movies on this phone really shows off how great this display is, and reading articles or scrolling through social media will also be an extremely pleasant experience. Yes, we do get that notch at the top, which some people really dislike, but even the most recent iPhones haven't gotten rid of it yet, so it's not like you're really sacrificing anything, if you compare it to the newest models. The iPhone XS Max's display has a resolution of two 688 by 1242 and a pixel density of 458 pixels per inch, which is a terrific set of specs. This is also the last iPhone to sport 3D touch on the display, meaning that you can unlock a variety of handy functions by pressing harder on the screen. You can preview messages or navigate to a specific section of an app from the home screen, for example. Now, the cameras on the iPhone XS Max still do a pretty good job. I mean, obviously, the iPhone 11 Pro the following year was a significant step up in terms of camera quality, and they do like more recent features such as night mode, but the 12 megapixel and front facing 7 megapixel shooters on the iPhone XS Max are fine to use. The telephoto lens is also a really nice addition and it allows for 2x optical zoom and 6x digital zoom, but unfortunately there's no ultra wide like on more recent iPhones. But nevertheless, these cameras are still very very capable, and you can capture some really incredible shots with them. In terms of video, the iPhone XS Max impresses greatly, with 4K recording at up to 60 frames per second on the rear cameras and up to 1080p at 60 frames per second on the front. Now like the photo you won't have many problems with the video if the lighting is good, but on the flip side, if you're recording indoors or at night, it can get a bit grainy at times. But all in all, I have very little complaints about the cameras on this device. Now as for the performance, all I can really tell you is that it's perfectly fine. The iPhone XS Max comes with Apple's A12 Bionic chipset along with 4GB of RAM. This chipset is still extremely powerful, and basically any game, any app, and anything you throw at this phone will run extremely well. And so I don't really know what to tell you, apart from the fact that you won't run into any issues with the performance, even for years to come. Apps open super fast, and swiping around the interface will feel buttery smooth. Apple has gotten a lot better at optimizing the performance for older devices in recent years, so I think that even on this phone's final software version, it'll still run pretty well. So, there's nothing to worry about here in terms of the performance. Now, battery life is also quite a strong point of this phone. The fact that the XS Max is physically larger than the XS means that there is actually a bigger battery inside, and it will easily get you through a full day's use, assuming that the battery health is still maybe 80% or higher, although I would definitely consider a battery replacement if the health drops below that. If it's in the late 80s or 90s, you're good to go, and you'll easily get a full day's use out of the XS Max, maybe even two if you're a light user. So, how much does this phone cost, and if it doesn't 
doesn't sound like your cup of tea, what are some other options at around this price? Well firstly, the iPhone XS Max hasn't been sold new by Apple since 2019, but it can be found used on marketplaces like Gumtree or eBay. Prices for the XS Max usually range from around $600 to $800, although keep in mind that the smaller XS is generally a bit cheaper. Other iPhones that are in a similar price range include the iPhone SE, which can be bought new on Apple's website for $679, although it's in a whole different category than the XS Max, being advertised as a budget device, and also sporting the old design with the home button and has a far, far worse battery life and is a lot smaller. Slightly above the iPhone SE, at $899, we have the iPhone XR, which sports the same chipset, but has a downgraded but still pretty good camera and a thicker, less premium feeling design, along with a lower resolution display. But the iPhone 11, at $999, would be a much better option to consider than the XR, as it comes with a better chipset and a much improved camera setup than the XR. Another cheaper alternative to the XS Max, if you're willing to take the smaller size, is the iPhone X from 2017, the previous year, which sports the same design and has pretty minimal internal downgrades from the XS series, so this could be a decent option if you're looking to save a bit of money. But the iPhone XS Max is the one for you if you want the best value for $700 and you don't mind buying used or refurbished, as it's excellent value for what you're getting, and it will be extremely solid for future years. So essentially, the iPhone XS Max is a near flagship device for the price of a mid-range. It's got a gorgeous, solid premium design, lightning fast performance, and pretty sharp cameras, and for $700 bucks, there's no denying that the value for money here is astronomical. This phone would be a great option if you're coming from an older iPhone, and if you're considering switching from Android, this phone will provide a very warm welcome into the Apple ecosystem. And so, that pretty much sums up my review of the iPhone XS Max from a 2021 perspective. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more reviews, comparisons, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.